Hello, welcome back to Emperor's Path. My name is SBJ. So, if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll realise that there's been very few videos in the last few months. Uh, I kept trying to film this video and then kept forgetting, uh, and I'm sorry, I should have done this a lot quicker. So, the reason, <laughs> the reason that there's not been many videos is because the layout is gone. So, we're moving house. Really, really good. It's, it's for good reasons. We're moving house and we are moving somewhere much bigger. Somewhere where the loft has already been done up. And because the loft has already been done up, it means that I can move effectively my weathering studio and my layout back into the same room. Now, the reason that it had to come out of the loft is because for a certain period of time of the year, I couldn't work up there and it was extremely difficult. And that wasn't just like a working on the layout. It was also weathering and also my normal day job desk is my weathering desk. So I was very much trying to work off the two and it just wasn't plausible. So we're going to be moving, which is fantastic. Uh, but because of that, it means that the layout needed to be dismantled. Now, initially, I thought about making it so that I could make the layout work in the new house. Could have been done. Then I thought, no, I'm going to do a fresh start, I'm going to take away the bits that I don't necessarily like about the layout and I'm going to try and sell it. So I took the layout apart, managed to get the two side pieces out, uh, absolutely fine. Uh, and when it came to the station section, I realised that it just wasn't going to come out in one piece and I effectively decided I'm just going to pull all of it up. So I pulled the entire station area out. Um, I saved and this goes for all of the layout. I saved every piece of scenery that I could. Um, I spent a long time over the last few years building the layout and whilst I am sad to see it go, I am excited about building something new. Now, the station area has been relatively saved in the sense that all the platforms are still in one piece. I've still got all of the canopies. Um, the bridge that I built that resembles the Fratton Bridge, that they're all still up in the loft. They're, they're, ready to move which i'm very excited about but there's just a lot of things when i built the station i was trying so hard to make it like fratten that i took away some of the things that would have made it a lot more fun for me to to play trains with sorry tesco shopping turned up so in short the layout ceases to exist we don't know when we're moving However, dismantling a layout plus all of the gump that comes with having a model railway is not an easy task. So I've taken the executive decision to start dismantling it before we get a date, simply because, I mean, it's taken me nearly two months to get to the level I'm at, which is where there's no baseboards up there anymore. Uh, and that's by trying to do it as much as I possibly can. And there's still stuff to do. You forget how much crap you have up in the loft when you're, when you're building model railways. Bits that you hold on to that you go, oh, I might use that. The amount of bin bags are just absolute codswallop that I've thrown away has been ridiculous. So what I have done is I have salvaged as much as I can of the baseboards. So I realized upon taking the baseboards out, how bad the baseboards were in the sense that there were some pieces of the long piece of wood. So uh, initially the layout was built on four foot by two foot boards in a sort of like a U shape with like a really small line going where the fiddle yard was. And in essence, what happened was some of the wood I'd used was just poor. I probably should have taken it back. I had some of the sort of four foot bits that bowed quite a lot, but when I built the baseboards, I was so keen on getting them in the loft that I was like, nah, doesn't matter, I'm just gonna throw them, throw them in there. Those, those who have spoken to me regularly will know that I have a big thing about how I like a minimalist approach to building a model railway. I like it to be where I don't necessarily feel like it's too encompassing, too big for what it needs to be. And I certainly felt like that was a thing with this layout. I probably would have done it where I'd built the station area as an 18 inch, maybe a one foot section. Um, simply so I could keep it nice and streamlined. Uh, and the two side pieces, originally they were two foot deep and 
uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, I shrunk those down to one foot ish each so that I didn't, it didn't make it feel like the loft was so claustrophobic because it, it was quite a small loft in the grand scheme of things, like compared to some of the other lofts that you see out there. Um, the layout was effectively 10 foot by 12 foot, which is, is kind of big compared to say like a room or a shed or something like that. But I didn't like how deep the boards were. I wanted to be able to get to things a lot easier. And it certainly felt like with the two foot deep boards, I didn't, I didn't get that. And I definitely noticed when I was taking the station area apart because that was a two foot deep section, the bits at the back, especially of the two tracks that were going through the platform one and two, they were terrible. In the, they were nothing compared to some of the other bits I've done since. And I think having an 18 inch or maybe a one foot sort of area to work with would be a lot better in terms of keeping it nice and nice. So in the planning stages, I've done a lot of working out designs and stuff like that. Would I want to have another station section? Would I want to have this? Would I want to have that? I can tell you that the one thing that I do want to build is I have always been fascinated by Ports Creek Junction. Now, if you don't know what Ports Creek Junction, Ports Creek Junction is, is effectively what would seem like most people a bridge, but it is the area of water that designates Portsmouth as an island or Ports the Island. Um, originally, the bridge was built as a swing bridge. It would go up and down, swing up, up and downy bridge. Um, and then over time they effectively said we're going to make it a permanent structure so they kept the swing bridge in and then just sort of built sections around it. I love the idea of it because effectively you have um, the M27 motorway on one side and then you've got the old fort which funnily enough also counts as one of the shortest tunnels in Britain um, because it goes for a fort not a, not a bridge. It, fascinating. If you, if you look into these things it's, it's a really fascinating area of the railway for me it is anyway which gives you two really good end sections as sort of um, scenic breaks. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to build this section and work on this and perfect this. So there's a lot of things that you can do with it. And I know there's going to be people saying that, well, you need the points at one side and this sort of stuff. What I like about it is it is effectively just a straight piece of track that goes from one end to the other. So during all of this closed down period, I have salvaged pieces of wood and I have made an 18 inch deep by six foot long baseboard. Very sturdy because I used a lot of wood for it. And then with the help of Bunter's Yard, uh, so Dave, thank you very much for this. Um, he has uh, effectively built me and constructed me Ports Creek Junction Bridge. Now the reason I wanted wanted to get it is because Dave's fantastic at what he does. I'm gutted that I never buy as much stuff as I'd like to, but that's because scenery wise, I never necessarily need these things. However, I really wanted to work with Dave to get this done and he's done a fantastic job. And if you've not seen some of the pictures that he's posted and the videos, it looks amazing. Um, so I might in fact turn up, but effectively it's going to be a nice tall section where you have the bridge in it. It's gonna be the main focal point of this particular part of the layout. And then you will have uh, like a nice river section. I mean, the, the river itself, I mean, is disgusting. I've paddle boarded along it and it's filthy. But the, the amount of shopping trolleys, mopeds and stuff that have been thrown in there is, it's ridiculous, but it's great. Um, going off uh, the island underneath the M27, A27, uh, you have the two, the junction where it goes off towards Haven, which will take you up to Waterloo or to Brighton, um, or it goes, uh, west, which goes up to Southampton, Fareham, and that sort of area. So the, the the trains that came from those particular areas are all fascinating for the area that era era that I model. So, rest of the loft. Also, if you followed along for a long time, you'll know that one of the things I regret not doing was building a bigger fiddle yard. I genuinely regret not having put as much effort into a fiddle yard as I wish I had. The good news is because of all this downtime, what I've done is I've broken up boards and I've salvaged boards and I've just used good wood. And what I've built is I have built, I've built six, six four foot by one foot sections using the old fiddle yard um, and using some of the new wood to build this fiddle yard. 
And what I'm effectively doing is I am building a much bigger fiddle yard. So the old fiddle yard from first point to last point was eight foot long and it had eight, it was one foot wide, uh, one, a little bit longer than one foot, probably more like 18 inches. Um, and it had four lines in it and you could accommodate a loco and five coaches and the two smaller sidings could accommodate like a four car unit or a one and three or a one and four, like you, you could accompany a train. So what I've done is I've changed how the fiddle yard was laid out and it is going to, uh, is going to have per fiddle yard it's going to be a one foot wide section and in that it's going to have six sidings. How I'm doing this is very, we'll talk about that later, I'm going to do a, a whole video on the fiddle yard when I finally rebuild it. But what I've effectively done is rather than having one fiddle yard on a one foot wide board, I'm going to have one fiddle yard on a two foot wide section. But I've broken it down into sections so it's a lot easier for me to do. Uh, doing the four foot sections means I can do all the points on one part and then the middle section will have just straight track which will join the two sections up and then the other end will have the other points. I've worked out that, if I've worked out correctly, most sidings will be able to accompany, accommodate, not accompany, they'll be able to accom accommodate an eight car unit or a loco and seven coaches, depending on the other fiddle yard, because I haven't I've built, I've effectively bought one of the yards, I haven't built the other one yet, uh, could potentially be longer, and then it will mean that I accommodate smaller locos on that, so one line will have all the big trains, and then one line will have sort of loads of little trains of different sizes and stuff like that that I can work on. I'm very excited about getting this built. What this does mean is going round the loft. As I say, the loft's already been done. Um, it's been fully insulated and stuff like that. So one thing that has, it's got loads of storage at the side, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, and I want to get my desk in. Now, without being in the new house, I've, measured, I've gone in and measured bits up, but until you're in there, you can't really work it out. I'm gonna need a space for a desk, for this desk, which is a six foot by two foot desk. Depending on the height in the loft, it varies as to where I can put this desk and whether it's a case of I have a train running on the desk, which would be great, um, versus having a train that might have to go sort of underneath it based on the, the eaves and all that sort of stuff. Um, but there's a, the scope is, so as I said, it was a 10 by 12 layer up in the loft now. So the new loft will be a 14 foot by 17 foot loft so a considerable amount of space hence why i'm able to do such big fiddle yards so i've got a lot of the baseboards built for the fiddle yards I've, and i've been building a lot of one foot by four foot sections because they're easy to transport i can fit them in a car i can fit them in whatever so when it comes to moving i can do all of that now all my rolling stock and stuff like that i have effectively uh, packed it up in its cases and i've put it at mum and dad's i know that on day one i do not need my let trains or layouts there. I'd love them to be there, but it's, let's be honest, it's not feasible. We're going to be moving all of the stuff in there. We're going to be moving bedrooms. We've got the toddler to move. We've got all of these things that we're going to be moving into the new house. However, I know that when the time comes, I'll be able to go get the stuff from my parents, move it into the new house. But because I've been building all of the, the baseboards and stuff, I'll be able to start laying those down. I have sound so bad. I've got loads of racking systems that I've accumulated over the years for storage. Just you need them effectively, and I have an angle grinder. So I've measured them up, and I know that they're too tall for the eaves in the new place. It doesn't mean I can't make them shorter to make them fit, and then put the baseboards on top of those. I've got loads of ideas of what I'm going to do to make all of the baseboards fit and get them all all in. In short, when I move into the house. I'm going to be having six inch wide sections that go around the outside of the loft. So I'll have fiddle yard on one side and have very, basically the two big parts of this layout are going to be the fiddle yard and this nice scenic section. However, I'm gonna build it so that I can add additional scenic sections in once I've got settled. I want trains running 
two main parts that I want, a fiddle yard, and I want that nice scenic section. And I want it to be that I can build that scenic section with no rush for anything else. And then if I decide I do want to put a station area in, which nine times out of 10, that's gonna be a very likely thing, I'll be able to add it in. So yeah, very, very exciting. The reason I started filming this is because I have work today on doing the corners. Now, I know I'm gonna need four corners in the loft. I know that two of the corners are gonna be going into the fiddle yards. So the very nice people at Mono Railway Solutions, so thank you very much, uh, Paul, at Effingham Junction for sorting this out for me. Uh, they used to make helixes uh, and they've stopped doing it now. However, they still have the template and they do a lot of MDF cutting for baseboards and stuff like that. So I said, do you still have the template for the fourth and third radius piece to go in? So basically like a quarter turn that gives you the template for a fourth and third radius track. Yes, we do. So they cut me a single quarter piece, a quarter turn piece. So that means that I had a framework for laying down. What do I need to build in terms of dimensions for a to accommodate this in every corner? What's the minimum I need? In short, I built baseboards that uh, were at least 26 inches by 26 inches. Here's the weird thing. I don't know why I did this with model railways. I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry to anyone who doesn't work in inches. Years of playing Warhammer where everything was inches. So all the table sizes, inches, distance to move, inches. And I've just always had that in my head. And I like the round numbers of knowing that I need a two foot by four foot. And it's weird, you've got to be in Q. Some things are in millimeters, some things are in feet, or they're listed in millimeters, but actually when you measure them, they're four foot by two foot. So all of these things have played a massive part in why I measure it. So apologies if I'm speaking in feet and inches when every other thing in my life is measured in centimeters and meters. I'm really sorry. So, I worked out that the smallest area that I needed was 26 inches by 26 inches, and that's given me a little bit of leeway for adding flex track on the end of it. I didn't want it to be that the rail joiners from the ends of the curved sections were right on the edge. Right on the edge. So, I built this so that I can have a nice bit there. I'll be able to put the baseboard on there. And I know that that's the smallest I need to still have a reliable third and fourth radius curve on there. I could probably fit a second and a third in there, but in the grand scheme of things, the distance actually from end to end isn't, isn't as big as I thought it would be. So I need to build one more of these. I've got one of these so far. For the, fiddle, for the sections that are gonna be going into the fiddle yard, I knew that I'd effectively be having the tracks spread out as they come around the corner, so they won't necessarily be third and fourth radius the whole way around. They'll probably be even bigger on the outside loop. So I did the same thing where this is six inches wide, which is what I want to have going around the outside of the loft mostly, so that I can have it very streamlined. I can have trains going around and it's not going to take up massive amounts of space where I don't necessarily need it to. And this section here to here is three foot, which uh, the 26 inch mark is somewhere around here and it allows enough space for the third and fourth radius but if I need to I can have bigger which is what I want because then this is 12 inches wide which will then go into the fiddle yards so effectively I have a section that can stretch out I don't need to build an additional section of the baseboard for that to go out because it's going to come around here and one of them will end up coming out here because we know that one fiddle yard it's going to be somewhere around here, but the other one's going to be over here because they're one foot and one foot. So, trying to future plan. So I've got the two sections built that will be going into the fiddle yard. So that's all done. And then I've also built one more that would go on the opposite walls as streamlined as possible so I could have a third and fourth radius curve going around there. So, that's a rough idea of what we're planning. The idea, very streamlined, at least on two walls so that the layout isn't going to affect my office at the same time. Then on one more, we're going to have a nice scenic section, which is going to be based on Ports Creek Junction. I'm, I'm so excited about starting this project because I think it's going to be something that I'll be able to test a lot of the scenery stuff that I haven't done before, or the bits that I really started enjoying when I was building the new layout, or the previous layout, that I just haven't been able to get around to on here. So I'm very, very excited for doing this. So 
that's pretty much it. The too long don't read is the layout's gone. The scenery has been saved as much as physically possible, especially like the met carpets and stuff like that, at least for sizing. Maybe I won't keep those, but I've got the bits still. Uh, we're going to be building Ports Creek Junction, which I'm very excited about. And then we're going to have a nice big fiddle yard so we can have really long trains going out of there, or at least longer trains than I ever thought I'd have possible on the layout. So that's where we are. If you've got this far in the video, thank you very, very much for watching. If there's a section that you think that I should put in the uh, new layout, you think there should be a particular thing in there, please let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it because at the end of the day, people sticking around and watching me do all these things is really good. Um, I'm going to make a, a very empty promise in the sense that with no trains running or layout updates or anything like that, I'm going to try and film some um, weathering videos. Chances are I won't because I'm really bad at filming weathering videos, whereas I can do weathering and show people in person really, really easily. But filming a weathering video, just not worth it. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please click the like button. Please make sure that you are subscribed if you want to see future stuff, especially with a new layout coming. Uh, and likewise, stick around for the next video because in a second YouTube's going to suggest something that it thinks you're going to want. Thanks very much. Bye.